What you're seeing now is just some of the last two years of peer-reviewed papers on pre-seismic anomalies of the electromagnetic nature. Hundreds of them preceded these before 2016, and now the maturity of their correlations have led to a NASA project involving electromagnetic pre-seismic anomalies and China and Italy's launch of a satellite to detect these signals before earthquakes. Total electron content, thermal infrared emission, magnetic field anomalies, all able to forewarn of seismic activity because part of the seismic process is electromagnetic. Now let's back up and get the big picture. We reframed those studies under the over-electrified Earth scenario due to cosmic energy. In our first two 2018 summaries of Earth's magnetic reversal, we went over the increasingly rapid loss of Earth's magnetic field and shifting of the magnetic poles. The North Pole is flying across the Arctic dozens of miles per year while the slower moving South Pole got a head start and has actually already left Antarctica. More information, including the links to the official data sources, can be found at magneticreversal.org, but here are the important facts. More than a century elapsed while 10% of Earth's field disappeared, but in just the next decade another 5% was lost, and the acceleration seems to now match the corroborated possibility of a rapid reversal. We're already decades in. We're more than twice overdue for the flip to occur on Earth, and it's finally time for Earth to repeat one of the most reliable geologic cycles over millions and millions of years. We then combine this with the other most practically important change ongoing, the Sun heading to grand minimum this century. A fair offset to the increased radiation that would come in with a weaker planetary magnetosphere, but with both Earth's shield and solar eruptions blocking cosmic rays from Earth, this signals a record cosmic ray fluence expected in the near future. Our previous episode discussed how the cloud production forcing of cosmic rays would lead to Princeton's tweak of future climate models having amplified effects. We also discussed how this would couple with the ticking climate bomb of cold found by Yale waiting to be released, and with this week's first mainstream recognition of actual temperature drops against current climate change trends as the sun goes to sleep this century, I'd like to offer some further reading on cosmic ice ages and why we have significant concern over increased cosmic rays with both of our shields against them going down. Now let's get back to those earthquakes and volcanoes. By the way, this is not the same flurry of papers you saw at the start of the video. There are literally that many, and there are dozens more that I couldn't hope to find them all, let alone have time to show them in this video. The totality of them is not the point. The point is the recognition, and beyond that, the involvement of the sun. Sure, it is much more recognized by Chinese, Russian, Indian, actually pretty much every other region than it is in the United States, but even that acceptance is growing. After all, our paper with NASA's Dr. Uyen Yen and Ohio State's Dr. Holloman got published and it was all about the sun and earthquakes. The only thing stopping energy from space from having a greater hand in Earth's electrical processes is the magnetic field. The geomagnetic and geoelectric systems already link the ground to outer space and cosmic rays are already known to penetrate to ground level. Simply put, everything about the electrical processes of earthquakes is going to get a boost as Earth becomes more exposed to the galaxy and beyond. However, it may indeed be the volcanoes presenting the ultimate concern. With John Casey and others predicting significant upticks in volcanic eruptions during solar grand minima, we are forced to look at the very convincing studies on silica-rich magma viscosity intensification due to cosmic ray bombardment, especially because a completely independent group of researchers just made the same discovery on two levels. Let's quickly also remember the potential of volcanic eruptions to play in the climate and cool the Earth. Now back to the new news. The cosmic ray signature on volcanoes is visible in both the duration and intensification of volcanic dust indices, the ones indicative of how much volcanoes are cooling the Earth. Not only does the wavelength match suggest forcing modulation on the 11-year solar cycle, but the lagged inverse amplitude correlation suggests it is based on cosmic ray surges, two shields against a major modifier of the weather, earthquakes and volcanoes, not to mention technology and human health, two shields faltering this century at rates nobody alive has seen rates not seen since before the advent of the scientific method, and in some respects, not seen since the dawn of man. Now there's no place for fear in this, and in the next few days we'll have information on what preparations, if any, might be made. 
Fear is a thief of your time and focus, but make no mistake, in almost every way imaginable, these changes on earth and sun are extremely concerning and merit your attention. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.